What's up, y'all? That was our intro theme uh, created by Vince Accardo. He's a Facebook friend. I've known him for a while. I've been doing uh, Myers masks for him and stuff like that. I create masks uh, as sort of like a side business. So, anyways, thank you very much, Vince. And uh, I'm Alex Miller. Um, what I do is basically make masks and uh, I'm an EMT, I guess, on the side. <laughs> uh, nah, why well, I wanted to do a podcast, so it's just like, you know, to get my voice out there so people can get to know me a little more. And, uh, you know, sometimes a lot of people just put out podcasts and fans get a hold of the podcast and they hold on to the information that the podcasters are giving out because sometimes uh, podcasters are looked at as, I don't know, maybe held in high regard or something. I might be saying that wrong. But, um, yeah, so, like, I'll be in a thread in something and, you know, someone will be like, oh, I heard this might be a possibility for the new 2018 movie and it'll be, like, the most ridiculous thing. And it'll be like, where'd you hear that? And they'll be like, oh, a podcaster suggested it. Or, you know, we'll have people who put false, imp like, you know, clickbait, and it's like, oh, here's the new theme, and it's like, not the new theme, you just want to listen to the show. So you can listen to my show if you want to, you don't have to, um, and I, I gotta apologize, the mic might have a little buzzing in the background, um, the mic's like 11 years old, so, um, but in regards to this show, I want to let you guys know sometimes, you know, there might be me cursing or whatever. I just want to be myself on here, be who I'm not on Facebook because fa I have a job and shit and all that. So, like, Facebook, I don't, I guess, want people to get the wrong idea because views can get misconstrued and I'm definitely not a bad person or anything like that. So, I'm pretty laid back. I don't want, you know, the wrong idea to get out there or whatever. So... <clears throat> I got a few main interests that basically spiraled into hobbies and sometimes even jobs. Um, the WWE is a big one. Um, you know, when I was younger, I was just obsessed with Kane and The Rock, but uh, Kane's a big one. And, um, you know, I've been going to the shows for a long time. Anytime it's in Boston, I try to go out there and shit. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stories and all that that go along with. Uh, going to the shows and I got a lot of funny ass stories I mean maybe we'll save those for some shows down the road um, one time this was a long time ago so whatever but one time it was like me my sister's boyfriend uh, Kevin this kid Kevin he's a really good friend of mine he's like one of my best friends and this kid Ryan Kaiser he's also a really good kid he's been a good friend of mine for a long time shout out to them and uh, we we were going to Raw, and like I I am drinking right now like a couple beers. I always drink a little bit. It kind of calms my nerves. I try not to get like hammered though. You know what I mean? But I think somebody had I think Kaiser or something had like some some like liquor or something like that, and he couldn't polish it off. This motherfucker had it on the train. I was like, bro, what are you doing? You have vodka or maybe it was like Captains or something on the train whatever so he gave me a couple of nips and I helped him out I polished that shit off we got to actually I'm sorry we got to Boston and I had to piss so bad like you know when you have to piss so bad that if you press on your stomach you're gonna pop like a water balloon like it hurt like to even walk so we're in the train station they don't have a pisser in the train station bro Are you kidding me so I'm complaining being loud and hostile we're walking down the streets of Boston and I knock on this door, this store, or whatever. And Kevin's like, yo, dog, they're closed. What are you doing? And I was like, well, fuck that then. And I start, like, whatever. You know, this is a long time ago. And I'm, I would never normally do this. But I was, like, pissing in a doorway there. So whatever, we got to Raw. And uh, we were, like, not in the balcony. But, like, we were way up. But, like, if you wanted, you could walk down the balcony and get to kind of the floor. So... And this story isn't like a crazy funny one, but it was just how rambunctious one time that I got and uh, <laughs> I felt so bad too, but um So this was when they were doing like raw 
in SmackDown before Raw or SmackDown, they would have like lesser shows that they would tape. So the I'm assuming it's so the guys don't have to travel as much or something. And um, <laughs> so Kane obviously is my favorite. He came out like three times that night because they recorded I think for some reason three shows. They snuck in three shows. Two of them were the lesser shows. One of them was the televised show. And I just remember Kane came out and fucking dominated three times. The third time, I thought he was going to lose. And I absolutely lost it. So I ran down to the like where the floor is, down the balcony and shit. And Kevin's like, oh no, what is he doing? So he follows me. And I they, they might have been like a parade. The other guys might have been following too. I don't remember. I know Kaiser was f uh, beasting on some nachos. So he was chilling. And that's not a joke. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. He was literally just... But whatever. And Kevin followed me down there, or whoever, and I'm down there, and I'm like, Yeah, F him up, whatever, you're a pussy. Talking to, like, Rey Mysterio or Sheamus, you know, these guys. And some poor bastard was chilling there, you know, and and I, I'm a big advocate for wrestling, and I hate when people give it a bad name. And the worst thing you can do is be drunk at a show and start screaming obscenities in front of children and the guy like pleaded with me as if I was murdering his family he was like please I have a uh, what do you say I have a birthday party of children here and Kevin was like dog stop and I was like so embarrassed we went back up and I tried to like eat a little bit to get a little like undrunk and stuff I can't remember much else um, yeah, so it's just, I feel bad because the guy, like, I try not to give wrestling a bad name, so the guy's like, yeah, I know, I'll take this birthday party of kids there, we'll watch WWE, that's laid back, you know, and here my drunk ass comes sauntering down the thing, yeah, fuck him up, like, it was, it was so bad, but, um, <sighs> Kane is a very interesting character to me, um, it's funny because they had an interview with Jim Cornette who's had a big part in uh, inspiration for a lot of characters I believe um, at least that's what he says and you know he's never been corrected as you know putting out really false information maybe when he argues with people and stuff but uh it's funny because he said his original idea or their original idea for Kane's character was a uh, Michael Myers directly like he had Michael Myers in mind when he made the Kane character and Michael Myers is really what this is all about man um, I wanted to do a podcast kind of all on Halloween but the thing of it is like I love WWE I love the UFC and I love Halloween and I'm a mask maker um, and I'm also an EMT so like there's so many stories and things out there I just feel like I'd be holding so much back if I stuck uh, solely to you know one subject so that's pretty interesting that he had Michael Myers in mind. And, and you can tell if you look at the movements of Kane, he does the sit-up and all that. You know, he's kind of nearing an end now, but I kind of like what they're doing with him now. I don't understand really the Braun Strowman. Like, I do understand that he's got to be established as a monster. But why does he have to be established as the monster? Like, a good way to put it is like, did you ever have another guy that was like, you know what, where WWE was like, you know what, Stone Cold, we got another guy who drinks beer. And he's got to be the beer drinking like crazy guy now. I mean, you have guys like Dean Ambrose, but I don't know. It, it seems like so. I guess that's the same. I don't know. I just I'm a little biased too because it's Kane. But in the same regard, it's like I don't I don't mind Kane losing the match. That's fine. But like, why does he have to be established as a monster? And then what happens to Kane? It like I mean I mean he's probably gonna retire soon, but. That's another thing I hate is like people always say, "Oh, well, he's gonna, he's on his way out." But Kane said he's in the best shape of his life right now. If you if you guys have seen other um, recent interviews and stuff like that, so so yeah, another big interest I have is like I love just uh, talking about shit like that. I love and uh, you know I know this is kind of an art form, and it's like I don't want to step into something that's like. So if you guys if you guys are feeling this awesome, I'll keep going. Like, but if people are like, hey, dude, you need to like, chill, whatever. That's fine too. I don't know. Um, this is just a tester, anyways. I'm like, I'm loving it so far. I just love talking and stuff like that. Um, 
So another thing I wanted to talk about is like UFC and stuff like that. I'm I'm guessing how I I can't remember, but I'm guessing how I got into UFC was um, Brock Lesnar. I think at like one of the UFCs he was in it, and like I was like, holy shit, I gotta see this Brock Lesnar. Like fuck yeah, and uh, I watched it, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like you know, you got your matches where some guys lay on people and stuff, but I was a wrestler too. I've been a fighter my whole life, so it's like I I enjoyed that too. And I was like, wow, yeah. I guess I thought it was more like point based. I mean, things like that. I thought it was more like amateur wrestling type, which I do love. But <coughs> excuse me, I don't really <coughs> need to watch it, you know. So. Another thing we're going to do today is we're going to call Mike Aspinwall, and um, he's been a, a buddy of mine for like 10 years in the hobby. I think I met him in 06 or 07, so maybe even 11 years. I can't remember. I remember uh, the way we met. Some dude was clowning him on michaelmyers.net because he loves Halloween 3, uh, Season of the Witch, and um, some dude was clowning him. I, you know, I was like, hey, back off. What the fuck? So... We're going to give him a call, and uh, we're going to talk about Halloween 2018 and what Danny McBride probably really meant with what he said. Um, and you know what? It has been about 10 minutes, so why don't we give him a call now? And I'm going to, you know, everyone's going to get their own mic when it comes time, okay? This is just a tester, and uh, we're going to see how this goes. And again, if there's a loud buzzing in the back, or if I'm too loud, I'm so sorry. I have no... Um, pop blocker either and I'm just looking at Mike's number now so if I pause like a dumb dumb uh, well I'm also a dumb dumb so sorry okay so let's give Mike a call I'm gonna scroll through my contacts and find him and I'm gonna find my speaker on my phone and see Hey, Mike, are you there? Let me put you on speaker. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, maybe, uh, like I said, this is just a tester, so I got Mike Aspinwall on with us. Um, hopefully the mic can pick you up good enough to where it's not, you know, whatever, sounding bad or whatever. Let me see where the speaker is here. I'm trying to just set the phone up here. That should work like that. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. So, uh, Mike, um, actually, I want to talk to you about Halloween 2018, and uh, one of the things I didn't get to ask before we came on the show is if you were cool with me telling, um, or you actually telling the story of how you actually have a tie to the real Halloween franchise. Oh, yeah. Um, funny, funny story. Um, in, uh, Maybe 2000 and 2009, maybe 2008, 2009. I, I'd have to check, but uh, there was this company, Devils Do Publishing, and um, they did these Halloween comics, and the whole uh, grab for the comics was that they were officially licensed canon tie-ins to the movie. Right. And, um, and they were great, like, in-between stories. Like, this story happened in between Halloween H2O and Halloween Resurrection, or this story happened in between two and H2O. Right. And, um, so they would, they were re releasing a few of these stories, and I had the first collection that was Night Dance, which was a standalone story. It was all original characters, but it took place in between uh, H2O and Resurrection, and then the next arc they did was the first death of Laurie Strode, and that was a whole thing about how, um, how Laurie deals with, um, the events of Halloween 1978, 
and how it eventually leads to her faking her death and becoming Carrie Tate. Oh wow! Yeah, I think I remember something like that, and they never really, uh, they never really tell you what happens in between those two. So that's a good like way to pick it up, or yeah, that's a good place to pick it up. But yeah, keep going. And um, there was they released um, the first issue, and I was very excited because I thought the. Um, the writer of the comics, Steph Hutchinson, Steph Hutchinson, really, yeah, really captured all the characters' voices and the tone of the original movie. And uh, he he wrote all those comics. He did Night Dance. He did all of them. But uh, so I thought I was like, oh well, he did such a good job and. Laurie Strode is my favorite character in the franchise. I love Survivor Girls, and right. she's one of the best. Right. So, I went on the official Halloween message board. I think and, I remember that, yep. Yeah. And they, they had sections for each movie, but they also had a section specifically for these new comics and so I went on there and I gushed all about the story I was like um, he and uh, the artist Jeff Zorno did such a wonderful job um, telling this story and I think they really did the character justice and um, I was so impressed because I thought they handled her much better than how she had been handled in Halloween Resurrection. Right. So, I, I just went on and on and on, and I sang their praises about Night Dance and, um, and about this new story, and I was just... I wanted to express my gratitude as these, uh, for these people taking my favorite character and giving her a really good storyline which I which I felt had not happened in Halloween Resurrection I thought <laughs> right. it was beautiful and then Halloween Resurrection they kind of undid all that um and so uh now I'm waiting uh, back to 2009. Now I'm waiting eagerly for this second issue of The First Death of Laurie Strode. And um, I picked it up at, at a local comic book shop. And I'm reading it. And um, this story took place uh, in May of 1979. So it was after Halloween and Lori was graduating. Right. Her and um, Lori goes to this graduation party and she says how the graduation party uh, was turned into a costume party because the host knew that nobody would be wearing costumes that Halloween because of the previous Halloween. Yeah. And I looked at the panel and it said um, Mike Aspinwall threw a costume party. And I stopped and I went, huh. And I closed the book. And this is ridiculous because I did this more times than, than needed. But I closed the book and I opened <laughs> it again because I thought for sure Yeah. I read it wrong. I'm like that's that's not my name. They the Lori Strode did not go to my graduation party. Right. Because there's other party. there's other Mike Aspinwalls in the world, but you know, how many other Mike Aspinwalls did they acknowledge in the message boards, you know? So you're like probably well, like Well, so I thought I read it wrong. I was like, no, it, it says, like, Mark Spinelli or something. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true, it, true. It doesn't, it doesn't say Mike 
the law. That, that's stupid. So I, I closed the book, and I opened it again, and I was like, to celebrate graduation, Mike Aspen walked to a party at his house, and I went, and I shut the book again, and I looked around like, is somebody kidding? So yeah, it's like a special time, copy that was planted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one more time, I opened the book, and there's my name as clear as day, as bright as blue suede shoes, and I was like, okay, it yeah. says my name. I'm I'm in the comics. I'm oh my god. So when I did you uh, out, when uh, did you get the confirmation that it was actually you? Uh, that night after I after I showed all my friends and family and anybody who had listened, I I was like I have to thank um I have to thank Steph Hutchinson. I, I went on the message board and I went to the thread that discussed the second issue of Lori. And when I went on the thread, everyone's like, hey guys, great job on the issue. Has Mike read it yet? Hey guys, awesome job. Great, great stuff. So scary. Love the cliffhanger. Does anyone know if Mike read it? What, what did Mike say? Has Mike seen it yet? And I went, oh my God, it is true. And I was, I was crying. Yeah. That's when I really believed. I was like, oh my God, these, these, these bastards actually put me in the comic. And so through tears, I typed this very long, long thank you about, you know, how much this meant to me because Lori Strode's my favorite character, and in some way, it was weird because she went to my party, and thank yeah. you so much, and and Steph, um, who is, he's so sweet, and he's so kind, and just a brilliant writer, and he just simply said, I'm so glad you enjoyed it, I hope you don't mind that that I used your name and um, that thank you for supporting me since the first issue of the last comic and thank you so much for um, being so enthusiastic and, and for sticking with us and for giving us your feedback and your comments and I wish I could do more but here it is, and I was like, nope, nope, you, you did everything. Right, like, that's uh, the ultimate that's, thank you. That's wow, all man, I could so That's for awesome. That. That's pretty sick, though. You got to be in a, a, a comic, and actually, how many people can say they're actually a character in, uh, right? in, in Halloween? It's, but um, it's, it's so weird, and for the longest time, like, um, these like this is official Halloween merchandise right. you know that, that I'm in so when um, uh, when people like when I talk to people about it they, they don't believe me but I, I have the issue um, hanging up on my wall and I'm like no look there's me there I am and and they're like oh my god you know and it's it's, it's just it's you know, they say that Surreal, life is stranger yeah. than fiction. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, exactly. And, and that was it. And I, um, that was, I, I always joke with my friends that the, the birth of my first child will not compare <laughs> to how I felt that night. You know? <laughs> yeah. Damn, man. That's such a good story, too. So, all right. Well, oh, that's, 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 uh, that's pretty amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I also wanted to talk about uh, Halloween, the new Halloween 2018 with uh, Danny McBride. And yes. uh, yes. first, first, I wanted to mention, uh, Mike might remember this. I, I just want to talk about how already it's getting negative reviews before we even have a trailer. And, uh, and I, and, um, I remember a little while back when people were complaining about the Rob Zombie film, I had said to Mike, hey, you know, you could have Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis back, and people are still going to complain about something. Yeah. 
and yep. uh, sh sure enough, that's you know they're complaining. They're not necessarily complaining that those two are back, but they're complaining about you know uh, little tiny elements that we found out about the film. So, uh, Mike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to read. I'm going to read like a little quote here. I didn't find the altered ending quote, which is fine. We know he's, we know that the uh, ending's being altered, but what I wanted to read is the gold part of that of what his quote was and it was hold on he says i just hope we don't fuck it up and piss people off mcbride told yahoo uh credit to yahoo this is such a diehard fan base you don't want horror fans being your enemies because they show up at your house with mask uh masks on uh we are diehard fans of halloween mcbride said we're uh confess rather we're watching all the sequels where things are taking left turns and there might be bites for fans and at least trying to deliver what we would want to see hopefully that'll line up with most fans so what my question to the negative fan reviews already which the movie isn't out yet if he said that that he that he doesn't want to displease fans do you think he's going to rearrange the whole ending well I, I don't think he's going to rearrange the entire ending that's what everybody like comes to the conclusion of. They just jump to it and it's like, oh, he's doing the whole end. So, so what? Now it didn't end. How it ended? And and it's like, no, he's probably just adding something to fit his story. Yeah, like, well, um, we we've talked about this before, and and I I'm assuming that anybody listening knows that he reconned Halloween two out of the series. Yeah. So it's just Halloween 1978 and then Halloween 2018. So what I'm thinking is that you're going to see, uh, you know, Michael choking Lori, uh, the the gunshot, him going out the window, Lori saying it was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was, and then and then Doctor Loomis looks it down. He's gone, and then I think you're going to see a little bit of an add-on of what he, what Michael did immediately after he got up off the ground and got away through the backyard, because he already said they're not they're not counting Halloween too. Right. So I. I, and I'm maybe they won't show the whole ending of Halloween, but I'm thinking all that they're really doing is, like you said, adding a tack on almost right. to sort of bridge the first movie with their movie because they don't have that bridge movie of Halloween two anymore. Right, and uh, and that's, and, and and that's it, fine. right. That's all I think. I I think fans um uh some of the fans got scared because he already said he's you know erasing Halloween two from this continuity and now he's changing the ending. So I think they they were already up in arms about one thing yeah. and and now so it was just an an easy leap to be upset about this. Too. And they don't look on the bright side. Like, look at what's going to happen. You're going to get a possibly a recreation of the ending, and everyone's like, well, hopefully he uses a, a new mask. And it's like, well, n I mean, not for the new scenes, but it's like, you know, hopefully we get a new mask. And then everyone's like, well, we'll probably use the original for the recreation scenes. And then everyone's not bummed out about it, but they're like, yeah, you're probably right. But what that means is you still have to create a new mask. So, and, and you'll still have new characters. So, as much as I, yeah. I hope they nail it to a T, I still love to see the alt. It's like going to a play or something, you know? It's like you see Hamilton or whatever, or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's like it's the same play all over, but everything's slightly different. I like seeing variations of the same shit. And some people don't like to see that, and that's whatever. But, um... And you know what else is crazy is the picture of the uh, the real mask, the original mask from the new Hall uh, the old Halloween. I'm sorry, uh, the original 1978 movie. A picture of it just surfaced. The guy that owns it finally posted one, and yeah. the fans are saying scary. that. Yeah. Well, did you see the fans saying like suggesting that he wears it? First of all, if the actor went to put it on, uh, it would just fall apart. Absolutely. I'm it's sure that, and it's like. 
you know what if they say they want to stick to the original plot there's absolutely no way they're going to use a frail and first of all you know people don't they have that's going to associate with rob zombies halloween the decaying mask you want that again yeah. you already bitched about that you didn't want that now you're saying he should wear a decaying exactly. mask exactly where so. i think it worked for rob zombies right and i thought it was a great idea but like you said i think if someone took that idea now they're just ripping it off right and it, it'll, it'll never have that newness again you know it'll never have that oh that's a good idea because Rob Zombie did that for two movies. Right. Let's just let a new studio make the, you know, their design of the original mask. And I don't think they're going to yeah. pay too much mind to the mask. I think he'll just show up. If it's 40 years later, he'll probably just show up and he'll have the same mask. It's not going to be like, they're not going to do anything crazy with that, I don't think. No, they'll, they'll just do what, what he did in any other of the movies where either you see him grab a new mask Right. Somewhere. Or he just inexplicably has another map. Right. Which so, could work either way, you know? That, yeah, exactly. So ba I, I basically what he probably meant was he's he's not going to redo the whole ending, you know? it's He can't tell you oh, what he's yeah. doing right now, you know? Because if he could tell you what he was doing, then you'd probably get it, you know? It's just like you, you yeah. haven't seen anything yet. So they said they're well, filming you know, in fall, so we'll, we'll see. I... I know, um, you know, uh, going back to what you said about people would complain if uh, John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis were back. Yeah. Um, I did see someone complain that Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back. Well, I've seen many of them complain, and even when I said I, that back then in the thread, a couple people were like, well, I don't care if Jamie Lee comes back, but if Carpenter comes back, I'm on board, and they're not. Yeah, and, like, I heard someone say he was upset that Jamie Lee was back because he would rather see new characters. And that'd be cool, but it's like, if you can get Jamie Lee Curtis back, then fucking Why not? you can get Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis back. <laughs> and I, I think I think it also, um, because it also shows that, um, they want to make this something special. Yes. Like, they want to make this an anniversary tribute. Right. Like, John Carpenter has said as much that he he wants this to sort of be the last one. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is the final word. Yeah, well, what he wants and what money says is definitely... Yeah. Or studios, you know? Yeah, and I, but I think, like, at least from his end he wants to make this sort of a this is truly all he has to say on it right. now and anything and after so, it's just literally some sequel but yeah and so anything um coming from him he wants to make it special and the studio wants to make it special so it's like they got him they got Jamie Lee Curtis. And exactly. They an event. AKA, and, give the movie a goddamn chance. Uh, it's going to come out next year, October. Yeah. I think they want to do it on Michael's birthday, the 19th, 2018. I'm here with Mike yeah. Aspinwall. We actually got to wrap up now. Um, it was great having you on. And. Well, Guys, give the damn movie a chance. When a trailer drops, if you want to bitch a little bit, that's fine. But right now, let's see what the movie has to offer. Next time we do a podcast, if you want to come on, that's cool. I wanted to talk next time about how a potential sequel might be hurt because I heard something that Jamie Lee Curtis is getting a lot of the movie earnings from this. So that might hurt a sequel. Um, we'll get Mike's thoughts on that. Uh, it was great that's being with great. you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you want to say, Mike? Where could we find you at, Mike? Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Instagram. It's uh, Mikey the Vampire Slayer on Instagram. Mikey the um, Vampire Slayer on Instagram. Yeah. So if if you if you want to see pictures of my food or what I'm wearing that day, that's <laughs> the best way to go. <laughs> 
And Mike's also got a sweet collection of masks, so if you want to check those out too, he's, he's all up in there. So, all right, man. Well, thanks for being on. And uh, no problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. And if anyone has any questions about Mike's Halloween story, there's definitely more to it. Wish we had more time right now, but this is just a tester, so I'm gonna try to keep it under an hour. And uh, we'll talk with you soon, Mike. All right. Thanks. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that was we sort of wung it there with the sound. Hopefully, Mike doesn't sound too bad in there. And uh, I thank you guys for being with me. The outro is going to be once again Vince Accardo. Um, his last name you could spell A C C A R D O. And um, he does great music. Check him out, man. And uh, I appreciate everybody for listening to this first episode of Forty Five Lampkin Lane. And if you're wondering, that's the street name of Michael Myers' home. Uh, that's the address of his home. Um, and I picked that for obvious reasons. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Thank you. It's been uh, X Miller on here. Thank you.